Are you excited about the future? My name is Ricky Watt. I'm pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church. And today I want to take just a few minutes to talk to you about new beginnings. As we come to the end of one year and are about to begin a new year, God took me back to a passage that I go back to just about every year at this time in Isaiah chapter 43. If you have a Bible nearby, I'd love for you to pick it up and look there with me as we read the word of the Lord. And listen, I believe this is not just a word from God to the nation of Israel during the time that it was written, but I believe this is a a very important word for you and I to get a hold of as we look forward in our lives. In Isaiah 43, beginning in verse 15, the Bible says this, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, And they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not see it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Again, just to think about for a few moments today about new beginnings. I I think there's a few keys that we see here in this passage to how we move forward in our lives, how we look forward to a new year. And and I believe it begins by us simply taking time to uh, review the past year, to look back You know, and a lot of times, and I'm just like a lot of other people, I focus most of the time on, hey, we need to look forward. You know, if we look back, we only get held captive there. And so, yes, we need to look forward, but I do believe there are times when we need to review the past year. Look at what God has done. For some of you who are watching right now, 2022, may have been the best year you've ever had. You may have gotten married. You may have had a baby. You may have had a job uh, change. Uh, There may have been other transitions in your life. and, And you look back and you say, that's been one of the best years of my life. But for others, this may have been the toughest year of your life. You may have gone through times of grief and sorrow and loss. You may have gone through times of health issues, financial struggles, all kinds of things, and you look back on 2022 and say, well, I'm telling you right now, I'm just glad that year is over. Whichever camp you come from, whether it was your best year or your worst year or your most difficult year, I believe that God says to us, now let's look forward. Let's look to what God has before us. I mean, that's exactly what he does there in Isaiah 43 is he reminds them, look at what I've done in your life in the past. Look how I've provided for you. Look how I have protected you. Look look at the provision of the Lord in your life over and over and over again. And friend, that should be the basis for our faith and trust in God moving forward is to look how God was there on my best day. Look how God was there on my toughest day. And friend, if He can see you through that, He's going to see you through whatever lies ahead, whatever is yet to be in your life. And I just want to challenge you to really allow God to to, to give you a fresh vision. And that leads to the second thing that I want to say to you today is that as we look towards the future and new beginnings, the thing that God's, God wants to do in our lives in the coming year, to dream big, to, to don't, don't put God in a box of your comfort zone and your comfort level in your life, but allow God to give you a big dream. 
And listen, it doesn't matter whether you're watching and you're a teenager or a young adult or a senior adult. God has a vision for you. He has direction for you. He has a calling for you. And, and, and again, it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done in the past. Start fresh and new and say, God, give me a dream. Give me a vision of what you want to do in my life, of what you want to do in my family, of what you want to do for me as a pastor, what he wants to do uh, in us as a church as we move forward. And that we would keep looking down the road. God, what is the next thing that you want to do in my life? Listen, do you have a dream for your life moving forward? If not, I want to challenge you to get alone with God and say, God, the, the past is past. Give me a dream. Give me a direction. Give me calling for this next chapter of my life to be able to follow the Lord and honor Him all the days of our life. Because I know this, as long as you have breath in your lungs, that means God has purpose for you. And, and don't waste your time. Don't waste that purpose. Don't waste that calling, dwelling on the past and what God used to do. Instead, say, God, what do you want to do today, in my day, in this time, in my life, in my family? And, and, and look forward to the new thing that God has for you. The third thing I want to encourage you uh, as we think about new beginnings is look for new areas of ministry. It may be that you've been faithfully serving in one area and it may be God calls you to another ministry or He has a, shows you a, a new need that, that He wants to use you to minister to. He wants to use you to make a difference. He wants to use you to serve in those areas. One area here at Havenwoods that I'm really excited about is uh, uh, that we have started a new missions emphasis in our church. And Brother Tim Potes, he's going to help lead that effort in our church family. But I just think of what opportunities there are here in our community uh, in our nation for us to go and serve and minister and throughout the world that, that God has called us to go to the nations but that begins across the street so it's not an either or proposition it's God where and when and how do you want to use me and just to be open to God's calling on your life in those areas the, the fourth thing I want to encourage you about is to increase your prayer life. I think every one of us, if we're really honest, would be able to say, you know what, I need to grow in my prayer life. I need to grow in my time alone with God. I need to develop in my conversation daily with God. You know, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And what that really means is that throughout the day, we are having an ongoing conversation with the Lord. That it's not just, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes that we have in the morning, and we certainly ought to be doing that. But throughout the day, we're having a conversation with God. Beginning January the 8th, we're going to have 21 days of prayer here at Havenwoods where we're focusing on prayer and fasting and really getting honest and real before God about who He is and who He wants us to be as His people and really emphasize that conversation of prayer that we have with the Lord. And so I want to challenge you as we look forward to the new things that God wants to do in our lives to really refocus your prayer efforts in your life. There may be somebody in your life that you used to pray for on a regular basis and you really lifted them up to God and, and over time you've just sort of lost heart. You've grown weary in praying for them. Well, I want to encourage you for this year to be the year that you say, you know what, I'm going to get back to praying like I should. I'm going to get back to praying for lost souls. I'm going to get back to praying for God to give me direction and guidance in my life and really honing in and focusing in on, on God through prayer. 
And then the fifth and final thing is that I want to encourage you about us um, grounding ourselves in the Word, staying grounded in the Word. Again, not just to hear what everybody else says the Word says, but for you and I to really get refocused about spending time in the Word on a daily basis. Again, we talk a lot here at Havenwoods about reading through your Bible in a year's time, and we have all kinds of schedules and things that we can do to help with that. But, but the, the main thing is, is that you daily are committed to spending time with the Lord and really allowing Him to speak to you. Because I really believe if we spend time in prayer, if we spend time in the Word, that we are going to see God not only speak into our life His Word, but we're going to see His Word become alive to us. We're going to see His direction uh, his guidance uh, in our lives, His wisdom being lived out in our daily walk and in our daily uh, journey with Him. And so I just want to challenge you and encourage you. Man, yes, look back at the past. Be thankful for the past. Be thankful for what God did. But be excited about what's yet to come. God is doing a new thing. He wants to do a new thing in you. And, and really ask God as we enter into a new year, God, show me what you want to do. What is that new thing you want to do in my life? And here's something that God laid on my heart to start doing a few years ago. And I would just ask you to, to pray about it. It's to think of one word that you could focus on in the coming year. What would be that one word? In the past year, that word for me has been intentional that I wanted to be intentional in my relationship with God. I wanted to be intentional in my relationships with my family, with my church family, that I didn't want to just, you know, sort of fly by the seat of my pants, but I wanted to really be able to be intentional and purposeful about what I did and when I did it, how I spent my time, all of those things to be very intentional. So what would that word be? for you as you look into 2023. Just pray and say, God, what is it that you would have me to really focus on as I enter into a new year? And I believe as you do that, God will give you direction. He'll give you guidance as to what you need to do. But listen, my heart is that you would have your best year in 2023. Now that doesn't mean that it's all going to be sunshine and roses every day. But it does mean that this could be the year that you could fulfill the purpose of God in your life, that, that you could carry out the will of the Lord in your life in 2023. You would be where He wants you to be, when He wants you to be there, doing what He has called you to do. And then at the end of 2023, you can look back and say, wow, look at what God has done. And then keep looking forward to what God has for you for 2024. Listen, He is faithful. And He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And my goal, my desire, and I hope it is for you as well, is that we would fulfill the purposes of God in our lives in 2023. I want to pray for you today as we close our time together. Father, I pray right now for each one who's watching this video. God, I pray that you would help us to look back and be thankful for your blessings in our lives. But God, I pray that we would ask you to give us a fresh dream. Lord, give us a fresh vision of what you want to do in our lives, in our homes, in our churches, Lord. Oh God, your word says that where there is no vision, the people perish. God, I pray you give us vision. I pray you give us hope. I pray you would give us direction. I pray you would give us mission for our lives, a calling for our lives that is bigger than, than just ourselves. A, God, a purpose that would cause us to get up in the morning with excitement about what you would have us to do that day for your kingdom and for your glory. And God, I pray that you would help us look around with the, the eyes and feet of Jesus and be willing to see the needs and be willing to meet the needs of others through the power of Jesus Christ to love people, 
to serve people. Lord, that you would give us a renewed um, commitment to prayer. That, Lord, we would begin to pray like we've never prayed before. Lord, we read throughout history, every time that you did a great work, it was always founded in the practice of prayer. So God, I pray that you would help us be a people of prayer and that God, we would stay grounded in your word, that daily we would spend time in your word and allow you to speak to us and lead us and guide us to be who you want us to be in Jesus Christ. God, that maybe the, the best way that we could have a new beginning in the new year is to commit our lives to Jesus. Lord, I pray if there's anybody who's watching right now who's never given their life to Christ, that, Lord, they would acknowledge their sin before you. That's just our disobedience to you. And that, God, you would give us the desire to surrender our lives to you and allow you to take our lives and be our Savior and our Lord and change us from the inside out. Lord, I pray that you would help us do that. But God, I pray for those of us who are saved, those who know you, that God, you would help us develop and grow in the daily disciplines of walking with Jesus. And Lord, we would not settle for just a status quo new year. But God, we would desire for you to do a new thing in our lives. We desire for you to do a new thing in our homes and in our churches. That God, you would get the glory and all that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me today. I want to encourage you to take this video, share it with your family and friends, those who you know. One thing we all have in common is we're coming to the end of one chapter and we're about to enter into a new chapter of our lives. And I pray that we would make Jesus the center of of, of our lives as we enter into this new year. And um, so I want to encourage you to do that. As always, if you have a prayer need, if you uh, if there's any way we can help you, serve you, minister to you, uh, please send me an email to rickywatt at gmail.com. We would sure appreciate uh, you doing that. But we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Uh, and we know that God has great plans for you in 2023. And so uh, God bless you. I hope you have a great day. And remember, Jesus is Lord.